if you're from Charleston, West Virginia, you're probably not, you don't learn how to dress a shrapnel wound. I mean, how, how do you do that under, I mean, the guy's going to die right there. Mm -hmm. If you don't learn how to deal with that, how do you learn to deal with that under pressure? How do you do that? Well, the schools that they had were very, very oriented toward um, what you would call combat medicine. Okay. The idea that you are the man who is on the scene, who knows what to do, and you've got to be able to respond even in the chaos that there would be in, in combat. But I mean, how did you personally, They, I know it's one thing to teach you, okay, this is what you do X, Y, and Z, but you've got a 105 going off 30 yards away mm -hmm. and you've got a machine, machine gun. That takes, doesn't it take incredible personal self-control to be able, you're going to get the next one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were some of these techniques a result of uh, lessons learned from World War One and World War Two? They were, they thing? were, particularly, particularly World War Two, because there was such a, a great development in military medicine uh, between First and Second World Wars. Uh, they learned a great deal about what needed to be done when and where. Because the order is important. It is, and, sure. and also to know when it's time to say, get this man back to a larger facility that has more... Uh, those of you who have seen the movie, you know, MASH or, or the TV series, that Mobile Army Surgical Hospital was a development that came out of well, came out of World War II, but was expanded and improved in Korea. The idea of a helicopter picking a man up far forward on the battle line and bringing him very quickly back to a facility that had all manner of surgery, not just not just you know a guy who could sew up a wound, but uh, neurosurgeons, orthopedic surgeons, particularly because there's so many orthopedic wounds legs, arms, uh, if they're not. Was it fairly realistic? Then? It was, it was. We had very, uh, it was a very realistic. Now the overlaying stuff got to be a little silly, but the, sure. the way that the hospital operated, because essentially the unit that I was assigned to in, in the um, Naval Reserve was, a, was the equivalent of a MASH. Did the uh, beginning of what we now call PTSD, was that starting to be refined at that point, or, or has this something that's just occurred in the last decade or two? Because a show going off, it, again, I don't claim to understand this and, and have never experienced it, but I think if a 155 howitzer shell hit across Ridgeway Street, which is 50 yards away, it would probably have the shock force of knocking me 10, 12 feet away and then even if you weren't injured with shrapnel, the, how you feel after that, and, and then that occurring multiple times, is essentially what we're talking about, the, the rage of battle, mm -hmm. the fierceness of battle, causes the onset of PTSD. It's just, or, or do I have that in my No, you're to... right, you're right. And of course, in the First World War, they called it shell shock. Right. In the Second World War, it was battle fatigue or something like that. The idea of PTSD as a, a continuing thing really develops probably during Korea and through Vietnam. And again, it's, it's like all other practices. You, you begin with a pretty general idea of it, and it develops, and people do more studies on it people to find ways to treat it that are better than they had previously. Uh, I mean, it goes all the way back to the idea of in the, in the, in the Civil War, the, you know, the war between the states, um, more people died from the surgeries that were performed on them than, than often than died from the wound itself. You might, you might be able to recover, but then you develop these raging infections for which they had no treatment. And of course, today we do have treatment for that. So, you know, they used to say that the only good thing that ever comes out of a war is that you learn uh, 
medical things that can be carried over into peacetime. The idea that we have EMTs and, and paramedics all developed during the time of, of the Vietnam War. We had a lot of well-trained uh, corpsmen and medics who had advanced knowledge of how to deal with trauma and that was put to use. Never thought of that. That was put no. to use in civilian times. In, in addition to other things that you do in the community, didn't you say that you're active with the local VFW? Yeah, I'm, I'm a member of uh, VFW Post 4299 here in Clifton Forge, and we have a number of activities that we do in, in, during the year. Coming up, of course, the end of this month will be uh, Memorial Day, and we'll have our service down in the Veterans Park here in Clifton Forge. Uh, and then we'll go out to, uh, sh uh, to uh, yeah, to Sharon, uh, out uh, Longdale Furnace, and at the Methodist Church there we have a program that we do every year. Well, thanks again for taking the time to join us today. Thank you, Jerry.